funds that were stolen uh, at the NDDC, uh, especially the most painful part of this issue is that these funds were stolen when Nigerians were under lockdown, you know, when Nigerians were passing through hell, and when they were lying that they had shared palliative and Nigerians were crying, then these guys were still stealing. They stole 81 billion at the NDDC. And the man still had the gods and the infantry to come and embarrass the country by fainting in a chair. I've never had or seen where somebody fainted in a chair. I think I thought people usually faint when they are standing. You know, and uh, it's very sad that um, this has happened. And it's like um, it was looking like they were going to get away with it. That was why we wrote the petition to the commission. And the commission uh, invited us to come and uh, shed more light, which we have just done. I've, we've adept, adopted the petition. And again, we have also provided the uh, uh, commission with some evidence because we were able to get some of the reports you know, of the looting at the NDDC. And we have pointed the commission in the right direction. Um, we are very happy with the reaction we got from the commission. And they have shown uh, on this particular issue, and we are hoping and praying that they don't uh, sweep the issue under the carpet. Like, but one thing we told them is that if we, they didn't need us to swing into action. This is obvious. It's a big embarrassment on the country. And whether anybody likes it or not, this is going to affect the anti-corruption index of the country. So these are the key issues that it's unthinkable that people were stealing money during lockdown when Nigerians were passing through hell. So, and my wonderful brother, Omar Elisha Ware, has shown, shown up here to show solidarity with us, and I believe that he will speak to the issue. So th that's the reason why we are here. So that is the way forward. Looking at the world You see, there's a fundamental problem with how we headhunt our uh, officials. If someone pays six billion naira to become a minister, what do you expect him to do? He will go right to the job of recouping his investment. Uh, this uh, particular ministry uh, that has been uh, indicted officially at the National Assembly, the minister, good luck, uh, Akwabi, I know you may not want to use this because uh, you're all afraid of them, but I'm not. Uh, reportedly spent over six billion Naira to get the minister. the minister. Mm -hmm. By the time he got the job, he also had a case hanging at the, yeah. the EFCC that was about how much money he stole when he was no. governor of uh, a quiet bomb no, state. Bomb so when you have characters like this uh, managing huge amount of funds, it's like asking a cat uh, to manage your dried fish for you. This is the re only result you can get. But it also shows that uh, the anti-corruption fight in the country is a joke. Uh, the ESCC has completely been uh, muzzled and demobilized as well. That is why they need somebody to bring a petition to investigate the public sector corruption that has already been investigated by the National Assembly and has also indicted a lot of the National Assembly uh, people. This is the reason why I have uh, always said that the Nigerian nation doesn't need the bicameral legislative system. Because it's just a bunch of thieves who are contractors. In the name of oversight, all they do there is uh, contracting. And uh, when you have National Assembly members who are contractors, they cannot make laws. They can only steal. So I, I came here to support uh, our brother and to let Nigerian people know that you can now see that uh, your solution doesn't lie in the hand of your oppressors. Yeah, you just have to take the bull by the horn. Uh, there are examples all over the world right now that shows that when people are denigrated in the manner that uh, Nigerians have been maltreated these days, they just have to rise up. You cannot trust the National Assembly to investigate and get any result from this nonsense. They are part and parcel of it. You can't get the ESCC to do anything. They are waiting for a petition. When, in fact, there's an NFIU that ought to attract the financial transactions, flagged it and picked up the people involved uh, before now. By now we should be talking about prosecution, not petition. Uh, so, but again, this is a, a conversation between, for me, me and the Nigerian people, uh, because apparently we don't have a government, not anymore. Thank you. You know, it, it, it's instructful, instructful to, to say that uh, in some of the documents we submitted to the EFCC, I believe he was there and several other people were there, you know, they visible 
they have they are looting NDDC money through churches, through schools that are owned by them. Even the officials were alarmed by the volume of theft that is going on in this country. You understand? And I, 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 you saw what they were saying. It's just sad what's going on in this country. It's sad. But just like what your I said, did anybody need to bring any petition here, for God's sake? So come on. The, the EFCC is statutory under obligation to investigate the this kind of thing. Yes, but like you have said, crimes. they've crippled our agencies, yeah. you know, and our agencies now look so helpless and powerless. Thank you. Thank you.